On May 20th, 2010, Seven News broadcast footage of former Transport Minister David Campbell leaving a gay sex club in the Sydney suburb of Kensington. Shortly before its airing, the former Transport Minister resigned from his position, stating, I have resigned as Minister for Transport and Roads for personal reasons, not for any reasons relating to my ministerial duties. Following Channel 7's broadcast of this story, the ethical reasons for broadcasting the footage were criticised by both journalistic peers and the public. A list of over 60 journalists that contain such names as Margaret Simmons and David Dale put their signature to a statement that stated the following. As journalists, we've pushed boundaries. As journalism educators, we've taught students to stick to a story, no matter how tough. But one and all, we deplore what you did to David Campbell and his family. We know that sometimes the private lives of public figures need to be exposed for public good in public interest. But you exposed this man for no public good, nor was it in the public interest. It was shameful and hurtful, not just to Campbell and his family, but for all of us. It demeans journalism. A poll conducted on the 9MSM website asked, Was Channel 7 justified in exposing David Campbell's sex life? With a resounding 73% of the 85,446 votes cast stating no. These outcries of damnation have come about because Channel 7 really had no ethical recourse to out David Campbell. The brief talk of Campbell's use of a company car to the venue as a breach of conduct fell through when there were no guidelines against it. This left Channel 7 with a defense that it was in the public's interest and that he had falsely portrayed himself as a family man. These defenses did not sway public sentiment, however, and thus the story has become more about homophobia in the media and the questionable ethics of Seven News rather than the original content of the story. Stepping outside of the story, the question of why was this story aired becomes a pertinent one. By examining the structures in place in the Australian television industry, we can see why Channel 7 would decide to wear such a sensationalist and morally questionable story that has, according to the Sydney Morning Herald's Heath Aston, seen Channel 7 going into damage control with owner Kerry Stokes said to be furious that his quest to position 7 as Sydney's TV news leader has been undermined by one story. As it stands, Channel 7 is the leader in Australian television in terms of ratings with the end of 2009 seeing them holding a 27.8% share of the major cities for free-to-air TV. Their closest rivals are the Nine Network, who hold a 26.6% share. The narrow margin between the two is largely constructed by Channel 7's lead in the weekly news. 7 News saw a weekly average in 2009 of just over 1,500,000 people, which is 28% greater than Nine News' weekly average of 1.18 million viewers. Channel 7, like 9, 10, and to a smaller extent, SBS, is also a commercial television network. Their funding for programming comes from advertising, which helps in funding for recruiting talent and the highest quality programming. Thus, these networks battle it out for ratings, which then appeal to advertisers who help to fund the network. Now, if we are to have a look at Channel 7's biggest ratings winner in 7 News, we can have a look at how that area of the network is structured in order to best cater to the Australian public, which in turn caters to the interests of advertisers. The primary way 7 News sells itself to the Australian public is through the quality of their news team. In terms of high quality personnel, 7 News employed the services of Peter Meekin in 2003 to head the news and current affairs at 7. Meekin came to the network with over 15 years experience and had been awarded a Walkley Award for leadership in journalism in 2002. Since his arrival he has seen 7 News climb to the top of the Australian news broadcasters. Through Meekin's guidance, Seven News was able to build up the reputation of being the destination for breaking and relevant stories. Seven News looked to continue to stay atop the ratings by employing experienced reporters that can break huge stories. In just April 2010, Seven News did just that by employing Logie Award winning reporter Adam Walters. A brief summary of Walters sees him having started his career with Channel 7 before moving to Channel 9 where he earned the Logie Award for his coverage of the 2002 Bali bombings. In 2008, he moved out of reporting and became the communication advisor for New South Wales Premier Morris Yemmer. From there, he moved to the role of political editor for the Daily Telegraph, before returning to Seven. One of Walter's first contributions to Seven News as a senior reporter was reporting David Campbell's actions surrounding the Kansas Kensington Sex Club in Sydney on May 20th, 2010. It becomes clear, after having looked at the structure of the commercial stations in the Australian television industry, and more specifically the battle for ratings between those commercial stations, how a story such as David Campbell's sex club scandal can come about. Seven's position as the Australian TV ratings leader, with the success of Seven News being almost the primary reason for that, 
coupled with their structure as a commercial network, which needs them to cater to the public so they can then appeal to advertisers, leads them to having to take certain actions to maintain their position. The current state of the New South Wales Labor government is a highly newsworthy topic at the moment. Thus, the chance for Seven News to once again reassert themselves to the Australian public as the home for breaking news came a knocking in the form of what on the surface appeared to be dubious behaviour in the personal life of the New South Wales under fire transport minister. Overall, the structures in place within the Australian commercial television stations, in this case Seven, require a balance between ethics in their practice versus the need for ratings. In the story of David Campbell, a focus on the latter over the former has resulted in Seven News drawing the ire of the public they cater while unnecessarily airing the inconsequential private life of the now former New South Wales Transport Minister.